So my name is Andrew Gillentine. This is my project for digital media history. And I'm going to be talking about a brief history of digital art. In this presentation, we're going to go over three different kinds of digital art. The first being pixel art, the second being cell shading, and the third, finally, being CGI or computer generated imagery. In the field of digital art, there is a lot of history behind the many aspects, such as when and where it began, how it became popularized, and many prime examples as to where this art style is used in the media. We're going to be talking about that in these three forms. So first going into pixel art, we can compare pointillism to pixel art. Pointillism being using dots of color to represent a painting rather than strokes and lines. However, the first true example of pixel art was created with Richard Shoup's Super Paint software. Now this program, Super Paint, was one of the beginnings of all digital paint programming and was probably an ancestor to programs such as Final Cut and Adobe, which is what we use today. Richard Shoup, as pictured on the left, along with his partner Alvi, pictured on the right, were one of the first to use Super Paint, in which Alvi turned pictures of his girlfriend in episodes of Star Trek into psych psychedelic spectacles. Now let's go into some of the retro examples of pixel art. Pixel art in video games, more specifically, rose in the late 70s and early 80s with arcade cabinets and home video game consoles like the Atari. Some examples of the most influential pixel games are Pong, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, and Super Mario Bros. While slowly rising in complexity as far as story and objective go, it's not necessarily due to the abstraction of pixel art. Mentioned in Simon Cotty's pixel art documentary, the more specifically you draw something, the less likely people relate to it. Meaning that if you make a stick figure go on an adventure as opposed to a, f a fully rendered and specific person, you would more relate to the stick figure's adventure as opposed to the specific person's given the fact that you don't really know who the stick figure is. However, it can always go the other way around. Some examples being modern examples of pixel art today. Games like Shovel Knight, Super Meat Boy, and Terraria, and even Undertale, all are very good examples of, of modern pixel art. Games have more expected of them in the way of storytelling, graphics, gameplay, world building, and character design. Games like these with more simplistic graphics require something to compensate for them. Undertale requiring amazing story, characters, and music, and Shovel Knight um, requiring great music, design, and gameplay. Even though pixel art was more limited in the 80s, today pixel art can have many more colors and developers are only limited to their imagination and artistic choices as opposed to the medium itself. Next, let's go into the history of cell shading. Cell shading is similar to 3D, using less colors and thicker outlines instead of gradients, and causing art to walk a metaphorical line between second and third dimension. The origin of cell shading isn't really specific, but as far as a full engine and not simply drawn goes, the first would be Jet Set Radio on the Sega Dreamcast in 2000. This art form would go to pave the way of many future games, some of the early examples of cell shading include, but aren't limited to, Pokemon during the DS era, the Tales of series, and also The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Cell shading has become a lot more prevalent in the modern age, with games like Borderlands, all the Telltale games, Catherine, and even Nino Kuni. Cell shading is my personal favorite art style, and it's come a long way over the years. And finally, we're going to go into the history of computer-generated imagery. While some art styles stay standard, others have to evolve over time and become more realistic. CGI, otherwise known as computer-generated imagery, is ever-evolving. Russian scientists, under the leadership of N. Konstantinov in 1968, made a mathematical model for which to animate a cat moving along a screen, shown in the right. This was then used to program a special computer to produce hundreds of frames and convert those frames into film. This first creation was the building material for the next few decades as CGI was used in the media. Now a lot of these films became very popular because of their use of CGI. 3D, 3D CGI was first used in the movie Future World that shows a robotic face being removed from the head on the left. George Lucas implemented CGI in his movie Star Wars A New Hope by merging it with green screen and other film methods with its use in animating a wireframe of the Death Star. Later, in 1993, Jurassic Park used CGI to create full textured dinosaurs, which looked astonishing at the time. Many more films used computer generated imagery, but the first full length CGI film, Pixar's Toy Story in 1995, led the charge in 3D animation. Other movies like The Matrix and Titanic used it as well to create breathtaking scenes. 
All this was only the beginning for 3D CGI, because in the 21st century, the industry spiked in popularity. And now some modern examples of CGI. The 21st century, many milestones were reached in making CGI look better and better. Gollum, a fully CG character from the Lord of the Rings films, was the first computer-generated character that made precise and direct interactions with other characters. Later, in 2004, the first fully motion-captured CGI film, The Polar Express, was released. Later in 2009, Avatar took the motion capture technique and enhanced its effects to a level of extreme realism in capturing specific facial movements. While Avatar is not the most recent step forward in near-perfect realism, technology is forever expanding to create digital worlds that we can be immersed in. This is just a very small portion of how technology has been advanced over the last only 50 years. The advent of new and increasingly complicated software to animate the realm of digital media is more up to the imagination than the technology itself. With the ageless pixel art and cell shading, and the expansion of CGI, digital art is becoming the norm in the field of entertainment, so much so that the usage of all other forms of art are becoming less popular. If digital art becomes so popular, what will happen to other forms of art in the future? Will they become novelty? None of it is really clear. Thank you for listening, and that was my presentation.